Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop 10 minute tool review. This week we're going to be looking at the Parkside PET25 electronic nailer stapler. Roll the intro. So for this week's 10 minute tool review, we are looking at the Parkside electronic nailer stapler. Now, uh, it was in the uh, middle of Lidl about uh, the beginning of November, I think it was, and it is essentially a brad nailer. Most brad nailers nowadays also take staples, and according to the instructions in the information, it takes type 55 staples, and it'll take staples from 15 mil to 25 mil, and it takes type 47 nails and they are 15, 20, 25 and 32 brad nails. Now with a lot of my tool reviews I haven't had the opportunity to use other tools to compare Parkside against. I know there's a lot of Parkside reviews on my channel but the reason for that is I think they're really good cost effective handy tools but this time I have got something to compare it to. I already own the uh, Bowker electronic stapler is what it says on the box but essentially it's a brad nailer. This also takes staples and it takes brad nails up to roughly uh, the same dimensions as this. So this is gonna be a very, very similar uh, comparison. And as you can see, they look very, very similar. Anyway, if anything, I, I'm gonna say the park side is slightly, certainly sturdier to hold and looks slightly better manufactured than the Bowcat. I've also, as you'll have seen in my videos, especially uh, the chicken coop video, which I'll link above if you haven't seen it, I've also got a Ryobi Airstrike uh, nailer to compare it to. Now obviously this is a bigger and much more powerful model than the Parkside but I do have a little bit of experience with these guns so I should in theory hopefully uh, be able to see how this compares to the other two. So the first thing we're going to do is give it a good old look over so you can see what it looks like. So the stapler comes with the uh, standard set of uh, Parkside instructions. Uh, actually pretty good this set. It's a nice diagram on the left hand side to show you how to load it and as I said the unit itself it feels quite um, sturdy it's very heavy in the hand substantial it's much heavier than my other electric stapler um, it all seems to be quite well put together uh, to be honest and it seems like it's got going to be quite powerful but famous last words uh, the magazine is loaded down uh, through the side here by uh, taking that out so just like a normal everyday uh, stapler that's how you get everything Thing in and here the dial on this side um, goes one way or the other and it obviously adjusts how deep the nail or the stale is staple is fired into the material that you're using so what I'm going to do now is I'll just film loading it up with um, some nail uh, some staples to start with and then we'll just drive them into wood see how it goes and also record the sound and how loud it is so let's do that now uh, just one thing uh, that I missed as I was going through the packaging for the uh, stapler um, I found this box in there which to be honest I, I completely missed uh, a bit stupid of me but uh, inside it has got um, some examples some samples of staples so it's got uh, six it's got 25 mil uh, 15 mil staples and it there's 300 and 200 and it's got 32 mil uh, Brad nails and 25 mil um, Brad nails as well. By the way, it's very hard to read. I don't know if you can see that, but this box is in with was in with the instructions. So we'll use those. I've also got some of these, which I got from Wix. They're just 25 uh, mil standard Brad nails, which is what I use in my Balka um, gun. So we'll give those a little go as well. So let's load up and get cracking. So I'm going to uh, start by uh, loading these. These are the 15 uh, mil staples. So according to the instructions, uh, the way that you load the staples is to take out the staple gun, put the staples in the slot, and then slide the gun back in. There. 
and then it goes back in. We're ready to go. Okay, I'm just going to use a scrap of pallet wood for this test. Uh, let's see how it gets on. Switch it on to start with. So, quite a heavy uh, thud, but the staple has been driven really, really deep into the wood. Okay, so now the staples are loaded, I'm just going to turn the gun on here and I'm going to set the depth as far as it will go, which is clockwise. Let's see how it gets on. Okay. So, as you can hopefully see, it's driven the uh, staple all the way through. Now, I'm going to set the depth the other way. And let's see if that makes any difference. Mm, not too much of a difference. It's very hard for you to see. But it's pretty much in the same depth as uh, the first one was. So I'm not sure how effective that is. Um, it seemed quite loud to me, so let's give it another go and this time I'll record how loud the sound was. Okay, so let's do that same test again, this time with the Bowker. And now the airstrike. Okay, let's try the stapler on this piece of stud work timber. And again, I'm going to set it to the lowest setting. Hmm. Noticeably, it hasn't sunk the staple in as far as it did on the pallet wood. Let's try it on the deeper setting now. Again, the same, it's exactly the same depth despite being set as deep as it will go. So it does lead me to believe that perhaps that setting, that depth setting, isn't very effective to be honest with you. Okay, let's load it up with some staples and see, uh, with some nails and see how we get on. Now, <clears throat> interestingly, it does say that this can take uh, brad nails up to 25 mil. It actually says on the side that it can take nails up to 32 mil and that you feed them in in the same place. Now, feeding that in on the top rung, which uh, these staples are, it's a very, very tight uh, fit. It does make me wonder if they're actually going to get stuck in there. Yeah, and actually, uh, I can't actually get the bride all the way in, and those nails are stuck in there by the look of it. Uh, they're not coming out, 
and I can't get this all the way in because obviously the amount of staples I put in, the strip of staples that I put in was too long and it won't shut. So let's disassemble it and see if we can get those nails out. Luckily, uh, Parkside provides you with a hex key or an Allen key. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is unplug it, even though the unit is uh, switched off. And it says in the instructions that to remove a blockage, you undo those two hex key bolts. I have to say, um, it does feel good, this unit. It's, it doesn't certainly doesn't feel like it's been cheaply uh, manufactured. Oh. Now, I think that was a little rubber washer that came off then. I have to see if I can find that in a minute. Okay, there's the end staple that was left in there, actually, strangely enough. Yeah, that's a tiny, I don't know if you can see that, a tiny little black uh, rubber washer on there, which when I took that off, it fell off. Um, and I cannot see the staples, uh, the nails in the end. So I am just presuming that they haven't come through far enough. So it may be that I need to try and feed them through with some more. I can definitely see the staples in there, uh, but obviously they're not coming through, which means they obviously haven't got to the end. So let's see if we can just bash them free. No, doesn't look like that's going to work. So I'll see if I can feed something in the end, possibly to help just uh, shove them out. But not not very good design feature because. The staples that I use, the bread nails that I used, are well within the tolerances here in terms of the type. So they should easily have fitted in. But as you saw when I uh, put it through, I could t just tell it was going to get um, blocked. And obviously it has done. So I need to try and find a way now of getting those out. So let me have a think about that. See if we can come to a, some sort of way of getting the nails out. So, interestingly, uh, that's what the gun looks like on the inside. I couldn't seem to find any other way of uh, getting out the uh, staples. In fact, I'm still not sure uh, they're going to come out now. I'll have to see if I can um, get that out somehow. Uh, but that's what the gun looks like uh, on the inside. Very simple electronics, actually surprisingly but let's see if I can um, free the chamber here and, and get the um, the brad nails out
Okay, so <clears throat> I've now had the opportunity to completely disassemble it and take the body off and I can now see uh, what the problem is. I'm not sure you'll be able to see that at home, but where you feed in uh, the nails, there's a little trench that the nails sit on, the head of the nail sits on that trench and what's happened is about halfway along the nails have slipped off of that and they've dropped which is why they won't come back out so up until about there you've got the nails on the trench and here they've dropped down off it so there's no way of uh, getting those nails out unless you had something thin enough that you could whack it in the end uh, and bash them back out there's no way those nails are uh, coming out they're completely wedged in there and as you've seen I've disassembled the whole uh, thing which was easy enough to do and it's easy enough to put back together but without this chute in there and you can see the nails trapped in the end there um, I'm not really sure what else I can do because to even get something in there is going to have to be incredibly thin it's far too thin for a chisel or anything like that and obviously this is one uh, completely molded unit so there doesn't appear to be any way of getting anything out of there either and obviously I can't get anything in there um, to lever it off so um, I can't really see uh, any way around this um, of getting those nails out. I think the gun has just had it so um, I'll take it back to Lidl and just explain to them that when I put the um, nails in that came in the the, um, the nails that I put in that it's got wedged and it won't come out and see if they'll give me a refund. So all in all uh, not a great end to this uh, video really. Okay, so fellow woodworkers, having just seen that, um, I spent quite a lot of time, over an hour, um, with the gun and I eventually managed, with the help of this Poundland one pound ruler, to push all of the staples back out. I've completely put the gun back together and I'm going to give it its first test to see if it works. Wish me luck. Okay, so the staples are back inside. Fingers crossed, let's see if it works. It does, it works. So, taking it apart obviously made all of the difference. Now, I'm going to try some of the nails that came in the pack. Let's see if it works with the nails. Okay, let's give it a go. Yep. Yep, it appears to be working perfectly. Okay, so what is my overall opinion of the Parkside Electronic Stapler? Well, I do feel I know this gun well, as you will have seen from the video, and I have to say, um, I actually prefer it to my uh, Bowker um, Brad Nailer. It's a lot heftier and it certainly feels like there's a lot more oomph when you use the gun. Uh, one of the other features which I, I didn't show you, uh, which I think is really cool, is on the bottom it's got like a fence. Uh, if you pull this little black clip uh, down like that and then slide it, you can use it just like you do a normal fence to line the nailer up and it's got a little measurement on the side in centimetres so if I select uh, four centimetres then when I go along it will give me a line of staples 
that are exactly four centimeters from the edge of whatever I'm using, which is a really lovely feature actually. Uh, certainly not something I've got on my um, current nailer. So uh, plus side, nice and heavy, nice and sturdy, um, and it also drills the uh, nails and the staples in really well. So they're the real positives. Now, um, negatives for me, the first one is gonna sound totally ridiculous, but all of the Parkside tools all come in lovely black plastic cases. Even the little uh, screwdriver, which is like a £12.99 tool, this doesn't. It just came in a cardboard box, a bit like the um, air, the hot air gun. Um, it just comes in a cardboard box. There's no carry case to go with it. And actually with this in particular, it would have been really, really nice to have a carry case. Uh, and the second thing, obviously, is the nails and staples. Now, what I did to jam this up, I'm sure lots of you would do using your own staples and nails, by the way, that are well within the range. They were 30 mil nails that I put in here. And according to this, it can take 32. And I've just checked, they're exactly the same gauge as the nails that came from Parkside. So I would say that was the major disadvantage. It's just the fact that you have to be very careful what you put in it, put in it so it doesn't get blocked. But overall, really, really pleased with it. And obviously now having taken it apart uh, and put it back together, it works perfectly. But I do need to give a really important disclaimer at this point. Please do not copy what I did. Please do not take your own electrical devices apart. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be very dangerous. Luckily for me, it's my device and I do know what I'm doing. Uh, and even though it's only basic electrics, you could really, really hurt yourself. So please don't copy what I did in this uh, video. If you've got something that's damaged or jammed, then you're better off taking it back to Lidl or the store wherever you bought it from. So overall, am I pleased with it? Yep, I'd give it a solid seven out of 10. Uh, it does a good job. I'm gonna use it now in a few little jobs around the garage. If this is your first time on visiting the Garage Workshop, thank you so much. Please can I ask you to hit the subscribe button, also like and comment. If you're a regular viewer, thank you so much for viewing this week. It really means a lot to me that you keep tuning in every week to see my videos. I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer than 10 minute tool haul and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care woodworkers, bye bye.